but we begin tonight with in-depth coverage of the Ebola outbreak. We're learning more tonight about how Rhode Island's largest hospital group is getting ready to respond to the crisis if necessary. And there's breaking news about the government's response to the global health crisis. Now in the last hour, President Barack Obama signed an executive order authorizing the call-up of National Guard troops and reserves if needed to address Ebola. The president postponed his travel for a second day, canceling an appearance in Rhode Island to stay at the White House and focus on the Ebola response. There's also an update on two nurses infected with Ebola in Texas. Today, Nina Ham was transferred to a specialized facility in Maryland one day after fellow nurse Amber Vinson was moved to an Atlanta hospital to be treated for Ebola. And today, a congressional panel grilled health officials about their response, prompting a stunning apology from a Dallas hospital executive about the nation's first Ebola death. We did not correctly diagnose his symptoms as those of Ebola, and we are deeply sorry. And tonight we're hearing from the doctors for the first time about how Rhode Island's hospital is training its workers for the possibility of a local Ebola case. Eyewitness News reporter Kelly Sullivan is standing by with more on today's headlines. But first, let's go to Eyewitness News reporter Susan Campbell, who's live at Rhode Island Hospital. Mike, doctors here say they are constantly training and they say they are ready for Ebola patients here at Rhode Island Hospital. At Rhode Island Hospital, doctors, nurses, and staff started to prepare for Ebola months ago. We're talking, uh, I'm sure, north of 10,000 hours in terms of the preparation of people in the um, in the system on this. Doctors John Murphy and Len Mermel talked with us about how the Lifespan Hospital system would handle a patient with a possible case of Ebola. We've decided that any uh, patient who comes to either the Newport Hospital or the Miriam Hospital um, who is determined to be a patient under investigation, a person under investigation, and who needs hospitalization, we'll bring them here to Rhode Island Hospital. The doctors tell us about 500 employees have received specialized training, which includes learning how to properly put on and take off personal protective equipment. Another thousand have gone through general training related to Ebola, and we've learned some hospital staff won't be trained to deal with the disease. We need to keep them abreast of the ongoing activities, but most hospitals, uh, I think it's unnecessary necessary for them to train every individual in the hospital. We have thousands of employees. The vast, vast majority of them will never come in contact with the patient, nor will we let them come in contact with the patient. We also reached out to Care New England, the other major hospital system in the area. A spokesperson for the organization tells us training efforts are focused on areas where the possibility of encounter might be the greatest. Emergency rooms, designated inpatient areas, and laboratories. Today, I also asked if there have been any supply problems getting that personal protective equipment. The answer was no. Coming up new at 6, what the doctors here tell us they've learned from Dallas. Live with the Providence Mobile Newsroom, Susan Campbell, Eyewitness News. Now, this comes amid heightened awareness of the worldwide Ebola outbreak. During a congressional hearing today, the head of the CDC insisted that the proper protocols are in place to prevent Ebola from spreading in the U.S. Meanwhile, the head of a Dallas hospital admitted mistakes were made in the treatment of the first person to die from Ebola in the U.S. who transmitted the disease to two nurses. Former Rhode, Island, Rhode Islander, I should say, Ashoka Mukpo, who's recovering from Ebola in Nebraska Hospital, watched the hearing and posted two tweets. Mukpo says it's important to remember those in West Africa are at the greatest risk. And we're learning more tonight about how Rhode Island Hospital is responding to the crisis just in case. Eyewitness News reporter Susan Campbell has live coverage with the Providence Mobile Newsroom. First things first, a spokesperson for Rhode Island Hospital has reiterated there are no patients here with Ebola or Ebola-like symptoms, but doctors here say they are constantly training and they are ready to deal with the disease. They have personal protective equipment. Cart. There are carts full of personal protective equipment. Training has been ongoing, and doctors say Rhode Island Hospital is ready to deal with Ebola. The risk to the lay public is exceedingly, exceedingly, exceedingly small, and that we're doing everything possible to make sure that staff, um, uh, patients, and visitors are protected. Doctors John Murphy and Len Mermel say the Lifespan Hospital System is continuously updating its Ebola protocols to match CDC guidelines. Doctors here say they've They've also learned from failures in Dallas, where two nurses were diagnosed with Ebola after treating Thomas Eric Duncan, the patient from Liberia who died of the disease. As we've reported, Duncan had originally been sent home from the hospital after showing symptoms of Ebola. I think one of the issues with Dallas is some of that information was given 
and that trigger wasn't pulled. And so we have a very wide net, very broad range of symptoms. They have any of these symptoms and they've traveled. They're taken right into an isolation room. Once in that room, we might find out that they uh, bang their toe in Canada uh, and they don't feel well. But uh, we're not going to take that risk. About 1,500 lifespan employees have had some sort of Ebola training care. New England, the other big hospital system in the area, is also training its employees mostly in the emergency department and laboratories. Live with the Providence Mobile Newsroom, Susan Campbell, Eyewitness News. And our coverage of the Ebola outbreak continues on air and online. You can go to our website for important information about the virus, including symptoms, treatment, risk of exposure, and prevention. It's all on WPRI.com.